And this is the technology we're sending this way. Now this is not subject to interpretation. This is a binary code. They're talking to us directly. Okay? Now, when I saw this, I got really excited because I'm like, oh my God, they give us a blueprint of their technology. Mm. It's right there on the bottom. I'm like, whoa, how, what is this? Well, the resolution is really poor, so you can't tell what the heck it is. Well, they thought about that. They were nice about that. Because a year prior to this reply to the Arizabo message, in the exact same field, a year to the date of the reply, prior to the reply, to the date, this crop circle occurred, which is exactly what's at the bottom of the reply. Just to make sure we had a high resolution blueprint of how they're using their technology. Here's your radio telescope. It's the exact same in installation. You can, you can see here the fans, you know, and all the uh, security equipment and this is right across from it. And that's what it looks like. Fractal tetrahedron geometry spheres. <laughs> Everything we've been discussing this morning. So here, they're, they're telling us directly, and notice, you know, that the sphere are fractalizing to smaller and smaller outside and fractalizing towards singularity on the inside. Now, <laughs> that's just incredible. And that's not the only thing they've been contacting us <laughs> with. A year after the Arizibo uh, message reply to the date. So this was a year prior, right? So the Arizibo message came in. At the bottom of the Arizibo message, there was a technology which they had put a year prior, right? Now we're going to go a year after. So last summer, midsummer, a crop circle occurred exactly the same day, but a year a year later. And this one was an enormous crop circle. Almost two football field long. Again, across a large installation communication antenna, which has security all around it. Right across road, this is a huge crop circle. Can everybody see what it is? It's the side view of an alien head with the big eye, the nose, the mouth. Can everybody see that? Uh -huh. Not sure. oh, yeah. Can you see it better here? Yeah. See his eye, his nose, his mouth. And look up here in front. He's got a hand like this. Right? It's the other hand. Right? Like this. And he's holding on to a CD. <laughs> that's his thumb here, and that's his hand. Okay? He's holding on to a CD. He figured, he, they figured those guys are at CD technology level. We'll burn them one. <laughs> <laughs> so they burned us a CD, and sure enough, on the CD is a string of a barrack binary code. What happens when you play that CD? Well, that binary code was decoded, and here's what it says. Be aware of false gifts, their broken promises. 
This was last summer. Have we seen broken promises this year? <laughs> oh my God. This is very interesting. Much pain, but still time. Certainly a message of hope for all the people that have been working towards a new way of doing things on this planet. Believe there is good out there. And then we oppose deception. And the end has a bell sound. This is an ASCII code, so there's a bell sound typically to end a transmission. So I haven't had time to work on this so much because I'm publishing a unified field theory with a lot of math and a lot of work in it. And so I haven't had time to work on this, but I am uh, convinced that the there is an underlying code as well in this because these capitalizations are actually part of the code so if you only read the words that are capitalized you have false broken promises pain believe good oh. op deception i don't know what op deception is could be other people, it could be many things. But uh, go ahead. Are the capitals at the beginning of the sentences part of the code? Yes, they are. How about the office of the president? Office of the president. <laughs> <laughs> the office of president deception. We have, we definitely have seen this this year. Does the bell sound have a certain I don't think it does because it's just uh, it's just an ASCII code, you know, that gives a bell sound. So I don't think it has a specific frequency to it. Um, so this is a direct communication, my friend. Go ahead. You kept saying the date that they did this one day, the same next year, the same day, next year, the same day. You yeah. know what date that is? Well, it's August 15th, I believe. I'm not sure on that. You might have to verify. And I've been going on the net this year to see the crop circles of August, and the the page is not updated past the the tenth or the eleventh. So I, you know, I'm anxiously waiting to see if there's been another uh, message this year. Uh, you know, direct binary message. There's been many crop circles this year. I'm sorry? Is this close to radio Well, it's in England. Uh, the, the two that we saw, uh, the two first ones were right beside the radio telescope. The third one is further uh, from the radio telescope, but then again, it's right beside a, a huge uh, repeater antenna, which implies communication. So here, we're being talked to directly. They are getting closer and closer to contact. We're going to see this afternoon a little bit more of the influence that other species in our galaxy may have had on our planet early in its evolution and how that relates to our current physics and how that relates to the physics that I'm presenting to you today because there's a direct relationship and it has to do with some of the monuments that are found all around the earth so when you look at this there is crop circles all around the world that are